people are, are not even aware of the uh, financial dimension of the Holy Spirit and how it functions in the earth realm in order for you to glorify God and show forth the might of his kingdom because oftentimes the provisional display is being accredited to Satan and Satan is just imitating God because God is the rich one, the wealthy one, the ruler over all materialistic possessions. So it's like it's a disservice when you as a child of God don't tap into that realm because it's like you're permitting Satan to create a false narrative of financial dominion. And Satan will take advantage of that and make it look like riches and wealth it is satanically influenced, satanically created, satanically possessed. When really wealth and riches is a God idea, it is God's realm, it is God's power, it is God's lifestyle, it is God's condition. So always remember this. Money cometh is the restoration of the proper image of God. Money cometh is the proper representation of God's economy. Money cometh is the Holy Spirit continually bringing you into financial results. Not just once every blue moon, not twice every blue moon, not every, every, every couple years. It's a constant river of riches being unveiled to you. Money cometh have gradual stages as well because the Holy Spirit will see how you deal with that dimension of money that came. You can stop the flow of money coming because oftentimes people don't keep on honoring God. They don't keep on sowing. When God blesses them, they start to lean to their own understanding and say, no, I should do this for this and I should make this for this and I should fulfill this. And they start loaning money to people and start investing places. You can become disobedient and stop the river of money coming. In the word of God, you notice that everybody in the church, in the book of Acts, they were experiencing money cometh and their reaction to it was, let me bless the man of God that taught me how to prosper anyway. Let me bless them that gave me the wisdom that opened up the heavens over my life as I was serving them and following their instruction and obeying their teaching. They got this to happen for me, so let me pour out blessings on them. So they understood the reaction of how to handle when God releases money cometh on you. If you get that aspect correct, money will keep on coming to you. If you think about in the word of God, why was Abraham sealed in his financial favor and his financial blessing? Remember when he met Melchizedek, he recognized I'm supposed to sow into Melchizedek and bless Melchizedek and I'm supposed to honor Melchizedek and he did it. You see, when he followed that, that rhythm of blessing, all other things was added unto Abraham in the plan of God. Father of many nations was unlocked officially and activated in full appearance. See, there's many things that God promised you, but you'll never see them until you start sowing into your man of God. Until you start honoring your man of God, you ain't going to see it. Ain't nobody got to curse you for, for that to, to happen. A lot of times when people hear the truth, they start talking about, oh, no, ain't nobody going to curse me. You already cursed if you ain't doing the truth. <laughs> Baby, ain't nobody got to curse you. Oftentimes when you tell people the truth, if you do this, this going to happen to you. No, I don't receive that. I ain't nobody going to curse me. Ain't nobody got to curse you. You already cursed the fact that you can't see that you're supposed to do it. I want you to always remember this. Nobody got to curse you to be in lack and to be in hindrances, and to be in poverty, and to be in sickness. If you don't honor God, these blessings not going to overtake you. 
faith without works is dead. Ain't nobody got to curse you. Oh, no, I ain't going to let nobody put no curse on me. Ain't nothing bad going to happen to me. You can say that all you want. As long as the earth remains, there'll be seed and time and harvest. The earth remains right now. If you're not sowing the seed, even after time happens, you're not going to have the harvest of pleasures. Everybody is after pleasure. You think that every time you eat food, you hungry? No. Sometimes you eating chips, you eating stuff, you drinking stuff. Not because you're thirsty. You're drinking because you want pleasure. Every time, did you, every time you did your hair, was your hair itching? Did your hair have lice in it? That's why you was washing it? No. You wash it because you want the pleasure of nice long hair, strong hair, hair that looks nice. You don't do everything every time because you simply, um, you simply uh, need to do it. No, you're after pleasure. And what the seed principle does, it pleasures God firstly. You reap that pleasure back in harvests. Nobody has to curse you. If you're not honoring God, you already curse. Because curse, notice this, curse and blessing is a mindset. It is a curse if you're not King Jesus conscious of, I need to bless King Jesus. I need to pour out money, time, servanthood, attentiveness to King Jesus. If you're not thinking like that, you already cursed. Let me give you an example. Remember, the woman with the alabaster box, she is blessed because her consciousness is, I need to sow into King Jesus. You look at the disciples, they are with King Jesus, but they are cursed because their minds said you should have gave this to the poor. Not only Judas, the other disciples were suspicious and they felt like her decision to give it to King Jesus wasn't right. The curse. Being cursed is a consciousness of everything that you could invest money and time into other than King Jesus. Being blessed is being conscious that you're going to invest in King Jesus. You're going to bless King Jesus. You're going to sow into King Jesus. You're going to learn of King Jesus. It is a King Jesus consciousness. I'm going to impress King Jesus with my reaction, my behavior, my conduct, my words, my money, my spending, my time, my meditation. That's what being blessed means. Being cursed means that King Jesus is not the focus. Now you know. That's why Isaiah 26, verse 3, I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. Perfect peace comes from operating in the blessing, and blessing is mental before it's physical possession. See, the blessing makes you rich. So the blessing is not first seeing money all around you, finances all around you, provision all around you. Being blessed, firstly, is a consciousness of pleasing God which comes through faith because without faith it's impossible to please God. 